Part two, gating. The gating window is used to define the acquisition parameters from your flow cytometer, the analyte targets in your assay, and a global gating strategy for your samples. We recommend maximizing this window in order to have the best view of all settings and options. In the top left corner of the gating window, you will find a list of all files that were loaded into the Quick Wizard. To find a specific file, use the scroll bar to the immediate right of the list. Below the file list are a number of other important parameters that you will need to define prior to drawing gates for the bead populations. Number of bead size. The default setting for this parameter is 2, as the majority of the Legendplex assays contain two bead sizes, the smaller A beads and the slightly larger B beads. If your particular assay contains only one size bead, please adjust this number to 1. Scatter plot parameters. For bead size X, select the forward scattered parameter used during your acquisition on your flow cytometer. For bead size Y, select the side scatter parameter. For bead classification, select the channel used to detect APC. For report signal, select the channel used to detect PE. Bead IDs. Below the parameter definitions, you will define the fields to define bead IDs and their associated analyte targets from your assay. Please locate this information in your assay manual. Using the number of bead field, adjust the number of beads for both the A and B beads tables to match those found in your assay. Next, enter the bead IDs and analyte names for all targets in your assay for both the A and B beads tables. Enter the lowest numbered bead ID at the top of the list first, and then fill in the rest of the list sequentially downward. Note, if you plan on running the same Legendplex assay in the future, you may want to save a gate protocol file. This file can be loaded during future analyses and will automatically load all the assay parameters and bead IDs you have just defined. To save a gate protocol file, click the blue Save button located at the bottom right of the window. For future analyses, when you first enter a the gating window, click the load button, find your protocol file, and then click open. Drawing gates. The purpose of this step is to use one FCS file to draw a set of gates that correctly identifies all relevant bead populations. These gates will then be automatically applied to all other FCS files and can be thought of as a global set of parameters which can later be adjusted for individual files if necessary. As such, at this point in the analysis, you cannot adjust the gates for only one FCS file, as any changes will be applied to the rest of your files as well. We will discuss the proper procedure for adjusting gates for specific individual FCS files later in the tutorial. To begin gating, you will need to create two gates on the forward versus side scatter plot, one which divides the A beads and the second that identifies the B beads. Start by selecting the Drawing tool by clicking the red circle with a pencil icon at the top of the window. Move your mouse and cursor near the A beads population. Click and hold the left mouse button and draw a gate around the population. Repeat this process for the B beads. Note, if bead populations are difficult to see on the sizing plot, you can select the magnification icon from the toolbar and left click and hold to define an area on the plot to zoom into. This can be repeated up to three times for further magnification. Any magnification can be reset to default by clicking the Reset Range button to the right of the magnifier. After you draw the A and B bead gates, the software will automatically attempt to gate the bead IDs in the APC versus PE scatter plots below the sizing plot. If you make a mistake, or would like to adjust the fluorescent scatter plot gates that the software has just applied, please select the eraser icon from the toolbar. Click on the gate you wish to erase. Note, if you click anywhere on the plot that does not contain the gate, then all existing gates in that plot will be erased. Next, select the drawing tool to draw a new gate by holding down the left mouse button and dragging the gate to an appropriate size. Once you are satisfied with the global gates, review how the software has applied them to your remaining FCS files by clicking through the list found in the upper left of the window. Make a note of any FCS files with gates that need to be adjusted. Remember, do
do not attempt to make changes to any one file's individual gates here. We will cover this later in the video. Provided your flow cytometer was properly set up during acquisition, there should be good resolution between all bead populations on the scatter plots. If you feel confident in your cytometer setup, you can use the software's auto-gating function to apply gates instead of manually drawing them yourself. This is accomplished by clicking the green Start to Gate icon found at the top of the window when you are ready to start gating. The software will then apply gates, which will be displayed on the scatter plots. Note, you can still use the manual gating tools after the auto-gating function draws your initial global gates should you wish to make any adjustments. When you are finished, click the green OK button found at the bottom right of the window to proceed to the next step of analysis. Adjusting top standard concentrations. In the initial steps of the analysis, the top concentration for all standard curves is left at a default setting of 10,000 picogram per ml. A large portion of Legendplex assays do indeed have standards set to this concentration, but for some assays, it is necessary to change these values. Please consult the certificate of analysis included with your assay to determine the top standard concentrations for your particular assay. If you need to adjust the concentration for a particular analyte target, this can be accomplished by clicking the Curve button that is now visible in the lower left corner of the screen. This will open the Edit Standard Curve window. Begin by unchecking the Apply to All Analytes box found near the midpoint of the window's right side. Next, check the box for only the particular analyte that you wish to change. In the Highest Concentration box, Enter the value provided by your assay's certificate of analysis or manual. If you ordered your standard curve files in decreasing order on the files list, i.e. from C7 to C0, please uncheck the direction increasing box. Click the blue apply button at the bottom to assign the new value. Finally, uncheck the box for that analyte. Repeat these steps for each target that needs to be adjusted. When finished, Click the green Run button to proceed to the Output Report tabs.